Now, prior to Java version 8, it was always clear when to use an interface versus when to use an abstract base class. If you had any code that you had to carry over, you could not use an interface because back then, prior to Java version 8, interfaces did not allow you to insert any code. But now you see with Java version 8, we are allowed to use little pieces of code inside the interface. And so now students tend to get a little confused as to when should I use an interface and when should I use an abstract base class. So I'm going to show you four important differences now between an interface and an abstract base class. Let's put the interface here on this side and let's put the abstract base class on this side. First, let's talk a little bit about the variables. What restrictions are there, in, if any, on an abstract base class's variables versus what restrictions are there, if any, on an interface's variables? Mr. Mitty, what did we say, sir, were the restrictions on the variables in an interface? They have to be final or constants. What do you think are the restrictions on the variables in an abstract base class, Brian? There are no restrictions. So you can have any kind of variables here you want. They can be public, private, whatever you like. And so you can see that the abstract base class is a lot more flexible with its variables. Another thing that is an important distinction between the two, let's look at a derived class here for a second. Let's look at the Poodle class. You notice that the Poodle extends dog. Could I do this? Could I go Poodle extends dog and also extends animal if I had another class called animal? Would this be allowed in Java where I inherit from two different classes? This is not allowed because Java is a single inheritance language. Now, take a look at a different example. Let's say that this Acme bicycle happened to implement the bicycle interface and this other interface called interface one and another interface called interface two. Would this be allowed if bicycle interface one and interface two were all interfaces? What do you think, Mr. Diego? Would this be allowed? This would be allowed. So another important difference between abstract base classes and interfaces is that when a class is joining a club or implementing an interface, it can implement as many interfaces as you want. But when a class is inheriting from another class, it can only inherit from one class. So that's an important difference between the two. So we've already seen two important differences. We've seen that there is much more variable flexibility in an abstract base class versus, say, an interface. And we've seen that if anyone is using an interface, they can use it more flexibly and have as many interfaces as they want, versus with the inheritance relationship, they can only inherit from one thing. OK, let's look at the methods. We agree both classes that are abstract as well as interfaces can have methods with code in them. Here's an example for an interface. Here is an example for the dog class. What are the restrictions on the abstract classes methods? And what are the restrictions on the interface methods? Ms. Nuha. So in an interface, the only methods that are allowed are default methods. Whereas in the abstract base class, we can have any kind of methods that we want. Another important difference, and this one is a little bit harder to see, is that we are allowed to have constructors inside an abstract base class. We are not allowed to have constructors inside an interface. So those are the four important differences between a abstract base class and an interface. The variables are not restricted. We can have any kind of methods that we want. We can have constructors in an abstract base class whereas we can't have them in an interface. And with an interface, a class that implements an interface can implement as many as they want, whereas if they inherit from a class, they can only inherit from one. So those are the key differences between the two.